folks right now then um, in 2013 you know the chinese nationals most of them uh, who had that kind of priority they downgraded it to eb3 and then you know were able to you know successfully downgrade and then you know move forward so if we look into the priority dates you know on 24th the state department said that you know first they release the uh final action dates and the filing dates but you know end of the day we were waiting for the uscas for the confirmation they just uploaded the final action dates first and then you know took it around in you know, a 5 to 10 minutes and then again they did they will accept the filing dates that's when you know, the whole community is you know really happy about it the whole, you know um, the indian community because of the huge movement but of course you know it comes with a little disappointment uh, especially for the eb2 you know uh, priority dates so now um, the discussion in here is you know uh how one can, can you know uh, safely downgrade from eb2 to eb3 and then move forward uh with the concurrent filing with the i140 and 485 and then you know uh, there are a lot of questions around um this uh, safely getting the uh and you have your eb2 and then you know downgrading it to the eb3 uh filing concurrently with the 485s unfortunately there is no premium available for those kind of i140 refilings because the original labor already you know have been submitted with their initial filing but we are also hearing from you know unreliable the check and the form so that way if they accept it that's well and good if not you know it will come back so that's one thing and then you know um also all questions that we are being asked this you know couple days that you know yes you know my priority date with you know with the previous employer that's what it is but unfortunately because of the pandemic and then you know they took the full time employment and then moved away from the employer who filed the i140 and now they are like you know uh, planning to go back to the previous employer and then see how successfully they will be downgrading it and then you know they have to have that kind of conversation with the employer where most of the time that's a difficult scenario for the employees to convince the employer because uh we have to look in both perspectives because you know for employees yes you know they waited for so long and then there was an opportunity available that they moved on you know with the new employer you know into a new, you know time employment but with the employer you know the challenging lies when you know uh, the refiling is done whether they will be able to meet that ability to pay requirement because you know they cannot risk their existing employees i140 is especially for this you know future employment um, you know it all depends upon you know taxes uh, whether they will be able to um, this, um so far would say that the district have this kind of position availability so each scenario is different and then you know it's per each individual situation so you know as i said uh, you know it's a disclaimer that we are just giving a generalized information here so if you have those specific situations you know please you know get the uh, legal advice with you know making the appointments with you know our law firm or any other attorney so make sure that you are making that sound judgment when you are moving forward because this is so important for every immigrant because you know i immigrated into the country as an immigrant so i understand the importance of that so make sure that you make that kind of sound judgment before you know moving forward so yeah thank you jenito thank you very much for very the detail information they actually unfortunately first a few minutes few minutes we don't uh, it means uh, we had some audio issues just i am repeating the same thing what uh, i asked the question initially the first thing i said that uh, we started this platform uh, webinar for the immigration to bring the simplified and uh, get more information on the immigration system to understand each and everything and uh, to analyze this information to your 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 um, maybe uh, uh, 
maybe case, maybe your scenarios. You based on this one, you can discuss your attorney, or you can discuss to the you can reach out to the generator controller anytime. Uh, we are we are ready to help to the company community. As we know, Janeta is doing uh, last couple of years from in Telugu and radio. So she is ready to help to the community. So you can utilize and uh, get more information and you can clarify your scenarios. So that is initially we talk about and uh, uh, just I asked to Janeta, give me a little bit information about the recent changes on EB2 and EB3. The why EB3 stop at uh, 2011 and EB3 moved to the 2015. What is different different uh, um, dates for this one? Is uh, lucky to it is a very good news for the EB3, but uh, EB2 unfortunately it ended is a 2011 May. So we have an option to EB2 EB3 downgraded. We can, we gonna discuss and uh, we can we gonna try to give them more information on this uh, downgrade uh, EB2 EB3. Maybe we open the conference call. Uh, maybe you can join the conference call. Just keep it m mute, and uh, maybe you can raise whenever, whenever, just whenever, whenever it open. The first uh, uh, few minutes are maybe ten to fifteen minutes. So we can discuss about uh, the current moment of EB two, EB three, and the downgradable EB two, EB three. Then we can open to the conference call. You can ask your question. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Janeta. So uh, it, my question is, <clears throat> so it, it means the recent changes never happened. This is the first time on history of a green card process. The first time, it meant for Indians, maybe in Chinese already has been in uh, EV3 is moving forward. For Indians, this is the first time. So uh, everyone is uh, confused. It means uh, uh, we don't have any information on the we don't have any information so how we can react so everyone everyone uh, has their own scenarios maybe their own situations they want to they want to clarify their uh, their, their uh, situation so now we can it means we, it means we are conducting a lot of uh, immigration in, in interviews everyone know it means at, at this time you get some information what is ab2 to uh, it means what about the immigration system and uh, uh, what happened if it migrate it downgraded to eb2 eb3 but even though we try to give the more information on this um, yeah the thanks for joining today uh, 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 Janetha, what if uh, it meant uh, downgrade EB two to EB three? Is a uh, I think uh, is a very fair to very very fair to if the employee in the same employer. I think it is a very fair uh, situation. Can you give the very it meant, uh, very detailed detailed information on that one? We can go by scenario by scenario. So. It, uh, we can explain the scenario. Scenario. Just to give me the downgradable. Uh, how? What is the process and uh, in your perspective? Yeah. As per your question, I mean, if the employee is still with the same employer who filed the I-140, and then you know their date is not current in EB-2, but you know current in EB-3, uh, definitely a lot of people are looking forward for it. You know how they can downgrade. And uh, this can definitely happen, you know, a safe downgrade can happen. But, you know, before making that decision, you know, I mean, uh, keep yourself informed and reach out to your employer because you will be needing your employer support on that one. Uh, you know, for the downgrade, it's like, you know, refiling the I-140 and as the filing dates are current. So, you know, they will be doing the I-140 and 485 concurrently. So that way, if you have any derivative beneficiaries, you know, they go in there as well, you know, with the 485s. One situation I just wanted to make sure, when you are refiling, you know, downgrading from EB2 to EB3, as the original labor is no longer available because it's already submitted with the EB2 um, initial filing of the I-140, so now you will be filing only with a copy of it. So remember, as per the USCIS, you know, um, the guidelines and the regulations, you know, they usually don't accept uh, the I-140 in the premium process because you no longer uh, have that original I-140 with you. 
so i mean you know on these lines we are hearing um the from the unreliable sources that you know they might even accept the i114 premium so my advice i am advising my clients that you know go ahead and you know uh, send it uh, with the premium you know the worst case scenario what it happens is just your premium form and the check will come back as usual you know previously we had experience on these kinds of cases like you know where you refile you know they don't do premium so you know with our firm we have that but you know in this scenario let's say if the uscis is accepting you know making an exclusion for this and then if they accept it you know i don't want anybody to feel that uh, they would have missed something so go ahead and send along with the premium and then see how it goes you know the worst case scenario is the premium comes back and then it can be done in regular so when you do the i140 downgrading you know uh, from eb2 to eb3 and refiling of course um, when you met the eb2 requirements then you automatically meet the uh, you know requirements the the education and experience requirements for the eb3 uh, and i think uh, the important part here is you know i mean meeting those wages the you know ability to pay off the employer if they are still working with the same employer i don't think they'll have much issues on those lines because you know uh, they are uh, generating that revenue and then you know i mean they are already getting paid that kind of amount on their w2 by working for this employer so it will be easy on those lines if one is with the same employer so doing the i140 and 485 concurrently and um, you know um, the important key factor that one should uh, remember in here is uh, uh, you will get recepted for the i140 uh, i mean the employer will get recepted for the i140 and the 485 and advance paroles and the eads you will get recepted for that but the eads and advance paroles will not be adjudicated unless and until the underlying i140 the downgraded i140 is adjudicated so you might see some delays in that because there is a sudden surge in you know refiling the i140s and if they accept in premium that's really well and good and a good news for the entire community but if they are not there is an increase in the case load for the i140 so the case load based on the case load the timeline increase will be there on the i140 adjudications so till your i140 gets adjudicated you might not see any moment forward on uh, the ads and advance paroles so one should really keep these things in mind when making that kind of decision whether to downgrade it or just to wait for another couple of months to see how the november and the december bulletin will play out for them you know i mean it, it's all the individual decision that they have to make but whatever the decision that you are making today you know make sure that you reach out to your you know attorney you know who is on the record for the corporation and then see uh, what they recommend for you what you really want and then you definitely need your employer's help you know um cooperation you know in this downgrading and then you know filing okay thank you very much uh, for very detailed information the most of the the green card holders maybe h1 holders as a very um, in a situation that uh, they don't they don't have uh, ability maybe they don't have uh, take a decision on the scenarios if the same employment is a pretty a pretty uh, clean and uh, they can ready to apply if uh, employer employer will helping or supporting to them but most of the cases i hear uh, maybe employee a employee b most of the employees are changed to other employees due to the set, some of the regions so in this case what is your suggestion it means uh, maybe they can continue and uh, employ b and they can apply i i140 downgraded and uh, apply 485 concurrent and uh, employ a can you give them yeah. more maybe can you you can suggest to them how they can react maybe how they want to ask the question to the employer or maybe attorney so that uh, they can take a decision on that one yeah i mean um, as you said if you know i mean if they are with the uh, current employer no issues at all you know definitely as i said you will be needing uh, you know your employer cooperation on that the corporation's cooperation 
But let's say, you know, I mean, we are receiving so many calls uh, to this fact that, you know, um, just during the pandemic, you know, I mean, they were really worried about the employment situations and then, you know, moved away from the employer who filed the I-140 to the, you know, picking up those, you know, full-time positions. And then now all of a sudden, you know, the dates move forward, you know, they really don't know what to do because the full-time employer haven't even started on anything yet because, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's, you know, pretty quick for them on those lines. Uh, for those who are not with uh, the same employer uh, who filed the I-140, uh, where the, at the new employer nothing has been started, you just have to reach out to your you know, previous employer and then see whether they will be you know, cooperating with you and then still willing to you know, uh, have that position open for you, you know, on those lines uh, <clears throat> as per the EB2. Or maybe if you want to downgrade, you know, to EB3, you still have to reach out to them and then see how it plays out because you are no longer working for them. And then the company might be having the ability to pay issues. And then talking from the company's perspective, you know, once the employee leaves because, you know, they have other employees on the similar lines where they have to show the ability to pay for the other uh, immigrant petitions as well for the I-140s that are already there. Um, the reason I'm stressing out on this one is, let's say, if they uh, say okay and then, you know, you go ahead and file, uh, if they have the ability to pay, that's really well and good for both of you. So, you know, you know uh, that position is still um, available and then you can move forward. But let's say if it fires back on, because USCIS can come back and, you know, query it, asking the employer to show not only for this petition, let's say if the corporation have 50 more petitions on those lines, like, you know, uh, their own employees, you know, uh, I-140s filed and then, you know, they might even RFE saying that, you know, give me the whole list, you know, uh, for the whole approvals of the I-140 stating, showing me the ability to pay from the day, you know, the labor was filed till today. So, you know, if the employer goes ahead and then, you know, reveals all of those things, you know, as per you know, if they have the ability to pay, that's really well and good because, you know, your petition will be successful. But let's say if the employer doesn't have that kind of ability to pay, it will definitely backfire because your 485 is purely based on this I-140. So this is the underlying base petition for your 485. If this is denied, then your 485 will follow on a similar lines. So one really need to, you know, um, have that kind of um, information before moving forward, you know, have a good talk with the corporation and also the corporation's attorney because, you know, uh, in the recent years, previous years, how many they filed and, you know, what are the challenges that are um, involved in here? You know, if we look into... Um, this particular scenario from the employee, of course, they are eagerly waiting from so long and then they would definitely would like to go ahead and grab this kind of opportunity because for Indian nationals, this never happened before, but it happened for Chinese nationals in 2013. So saying that that is from the employee's perspective, you know, hey, you know, I mean, it would be good if they can keep, but, you know, if you look in from the employer's perspective, you know, for them, they really don't want to put the existing employees at stake because they don't want to go ahead and then, you know, answer that RFE where, you know, again, challenging and showing that ability to pay for all of their existing employees. So that is one underlying challenge. You know, everybody has their pros and cons and then, you know, but having a conversation with the employer and the attorney, you know, makes things so many, so much, you know, clear whether they will be able to move forward or not. But definitely you will be needing your corporation's cooperation for this, no matter what it is. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Very details. Yeah, definitely. And so if employer employer is ready to help, 
definitely you can utilize this oppor opportunity. So because the green card is a very long waiting process, really everyone have their own situation. So this is the best time and uh, check with your previous employer. They can prove the um, ability to pay. Definitely you can utilize and apply and uh, get the great card, maybe EID, not green card, maybe EIDs. Uh, Janita, I have a question. Um, uh, is uh, the question from the Shashi? Uh, if I downgrade from EB2 EB3 to avail the current filing date, does my child age at lock based on the I485 to EB3? Uh, if, retrogate for before getting my EAD or GC, GC. Yeah. As per the CSPA Act, you know, if you already added your child um, to the I-140 as a derivative beneficiary, that's when the age gets freeze there. But if they are eligible now, you know, to go ahead and file the 485, you should definitely, you know, do that for them. So they are taking advantage of the um, uh, current available dates as per this October visa bulletin, you know, no matter if it retrogresses back, at least they'll have that EAD and advanced parole and they'll have their own individual 485 pending with the USCIS. Okay. Yeah, thanks, uh, Janato. I think uh, Shashi got information. I think Sh Shashi get the exact information about this question. So I have another question from the, the Varsha Reddy. I have an approved I-140 with the priority date December 2014 from employee A. I recently moved to employee B in, uh, maybe it's not recent, a couple of years ago, 2000, he moved in 2017, but haven't filed new form for the GC with my new employer till date. What are the options to downgrade from EB2, EB3 as the I-140 is with the old employer? I think uh, we can discuss this one, the same scenario, I think, uh, if if uh, the previous employer is ready to prove ability to pay, maybe he can apply the I one he, he can downgrade to EB two EB three and uh, apply the company. Yeah, I think process. whatever we uh, spoke so far, I think if they are there online and hearing to that, I think that pretty much would have answered. Yes, you know, have a conversation. Everybody, those who are planning to downgrade, you know, have that upfront conversation with the employer because, you know, you really don't want to take that step ahead. And then, you know, uh, with some amb ambiguity, you know, I mean, doing, you know, hey, I thought this, I thought that. And then, you know, employer version is different. And then, you know, if there is no cooperation from the employer, you know, um, whatever is going in there, you know, pretty much, you know, it's a financial waste for the USCIS fees and the attorney's fees in there. So make sure that you are making those kind of informed decisions after having the conversation with the employer so that way it will not impact and disappoint you later. Okay. Yeah, I have another question, uh, Janeta, from Ross Corner, maybe the name is different. My priority date is current in EB2 and my family struck in uh, India due to COVID. Could you please tell me, are there any way it might bring back to the US? The What is the situation in the scenario? Let's say uh, if any, any H1 holder got current, their family in India, they want to apply. So anyway, he can apply because in within the in, inside the US, he can apply on base of I-94. Their family in India, what is the scenario to apply for them? Yeah, I mean, this is the ongoing, you know, conversations that we are having with some of them where uh, if they have a valid visa, you know, if they are in India having a valid H-4 visa, they should immediately fly back to the United States and then, you know, only once they are here, they will be able to do the adjustment of status filings. You know, I mean, if you compare this, you know, to 2007, you know, same thing happened to a lot of people. Those families are outside and then, you know, they immediately, you know, came back in and then did the adjustment of status. I don't know anybody remembers that. Um, you know, similar way, if they have a valid visa, you know, definitely they should come back and then, you know, avail this opportunity. But some of them got uh, stuck by not having, you know, those valid visas. In those scenarios, you know, 
if the husband is here working as per you know the proclamation and legal exemptions that were uh, you know announced later on um you should try uh, getting an appointment at the consulate uh saying that you know the spouse is here on the h1b and then they are eligible for you know uh h4 you know visas so get those visas stamped and then you know come back immediately in here because if you have to do a consular process it's going to take time and uh communication back and forth with the uscis and it might take you know years to you know uh, do those but definitely i would recommend if you have visas come back immediately if not as the spouse is based inside the country i know um try to get uh, uh, the visa appointments based on you know the exemptions that are given per the proclamations that they are you know doing the visas so get those um, visa stamp then come into the country and then do but i would definitely say that you know um, avail this opportunity because you know we never saw this kind of forward movement and then opening up uh, after 2007 they once did it in 2015 for a couple of days and then you know went back but uh, this is a major uh, stir up that after the 2007 so we are now in 2020 so you know you can imagine you know how long it took yeah, yeah. i think yeah it's a very good information the same question asked by sinwastra trola party maybe if you hear the same answer apply for you so uh now we can open the the conference call if anyone want to ask a question maybe just to start your name and uh, ask your question yeah hi uh, my name is vijay kenisetty um i would like to understand the situation of this a company merger because the previous employer no longer exists employee no longer exists so how can i downgrade from eb2 to eb3 in this situation I mean, okay if there is a okay if there is a merger and acquisition that happened you know i mean employer um you know before that the immigration attorney might have analyzed if there is an amendment that is you know um required for the succession in the you know uh, successor's interest in there so if that is not done they have to if that is required they have to do the amendment and then you know uh, downgrade it at the same time that's what i would say as this is specific to your corporation you just have to check with your immigration attorney whether the uh, successor in interest is really required or not based on you know the rules if it is required they might have already filed the i140 in place then you know you can typically uh, downgrade uh, based on um, that scenario from eb2 to eb3 if not i would say you know amend and downgrade at the same time okay okay thank you so all can be done in parallel on one in one go can you repeat that again vijay so um you mean to say that all all can go in in one in parallel right down Uh, I mean I would say yeah agreed. if the, yeah if if that is required I would say do at the same time so that way you will be saving some time in there but again the challenge still will be there you know uh, how exactly you know it, it will run through all the scenarios you know the ability to pay and all of those things okay thank you man thank you so yeah. thank you Vijay yeah, thank you for thank you for call maybe we, we can go for the next uh, just say your name and you can ask question hi this is rahul uh, actually uh, rahul can you please be a little bit louder yeah uh, uh, my scenario is like uh, my previous employer which who is holding my current i140 uh, is not generating any revenue but i was the only employer who filed i140 uh, so what are the chances of uh, getting this approved uh, down getting this Uh, getting approved. Yeah, I mean, you know, if there are no revenues, and then if you are no longer working for him, let's say hypothetically, let's run a scenario with that. You know, let's say when your labor was applied, you were working for him on the H one B, and you know the labor wages came up, you know, around you know hundred k. Let's say for example, hypothetically, now you are no longer working for him, and then you know. if you go back to him and if he has to offer the same position for you and then downgrade he definitely should meet that ability to pay requirement so if he is not able to then you know i could 
see that you know your i140 might not be successfully you know come through so have a conversation you know keeping in mind what are your wages on the labor and then you know what are the company what is the company's financial status now because you are no longer working what for them and then whether they will be able to meet those requirements in the form of the profits or assets and then you know you have to have that kind of discussion so you know go ahead and have that conversation with your employer and then maybe if you have to reach out to us you can reach out to us or you know if you already have an immigration attorney please reach out to your corporation immigration attorney and then you know have a good conversation before you know making a step forward yeah thank you this uh, same same note down this one this kind of scenarios maybe uh he said rahul said is the only one employee applied for the i140 but this company getting revenue maybe whatever the 1 million or something maybe if com- if uh, employer is ready to support maybe you can maybe rahul can utilize this opportunity right janata yes de- yes definitely only thing lies in there is the position should be you know whatever the position that was offered should be in existence and then company should meet the ability to pay because of course when you downgrade and then you know do under the eb3 you know if you met the eb2 requirements definitely you are going to meet the eb3 requirements there no question in that only two scenarios are whether you know the employer will meet that ability to pay because you are no longer working of course let's say you know i mean if the corporation as venkat said are making you know 100 million but you know if the profits are and assets are there around you know 500k or 200k whatever it is if they meet they should be able to but you know it all depends upon whether the employer is still willing to offer you that but if they meet and they are willing to yes you have to go ahead and then you know immediately uh, you know have that opportunity for you yeah janata it means uh, just okay, here sorry, i want to profit start for which period like uh, to uh, from the start of the company until that uh, or... we should count the profits or yeah i mean they might you assets. know they can show right now when they are filing for the current year but you know usis always can come back and then ask them said saying that because your labor was filed you know way back then so they might even ask from that date to till date you know to show the profits you know every year or to show those kind of ability to meet requirement from the year your labor was filed till date so but when they are reapplying they can just go ahead with the current uh, you know uh, taxes but you know if the uh, if it is rf feed you know most likely you know that would be the scenario so you have to definitely analyze run it through your you know corporation lawyer yeah janitor just uh, we, we want to discuss more on that most of the people even so i saw this most of the people most of the eligible for apply the green card in ab3 they have the same question how i can approach to the employer if i approach how what question need to be asked to them all right so currently maybe some some uh, some h1 holders is uh, moving to the out of the company but they really want to apply the uh, 485 due to the their situation if uh, as we discuss if company is a uh, Uh, running very good position or they are uh, uh, getting very good revenues and they do have the profit your employee is ready to ready to prove ability to pay maybe you can freely reach out to the, your employer and uh, you can request and uh, you can file even if don't go to eb2 to eb3 and 485 so here the i think i, I think most of the uh, people did not understanding this scenario just i want to more Uh, it means i want to give the more clarification so that they can uh, understand and uh, they can discuss the their employees and uh, they can get benefit out of it yeah thank you thank you very much ajay uh, do you do you want to give any additional information on this one apart from this uh, see apart from this you know i mean uh, unless until you reach out to your employer and ask them you know run that scenario with them you know you will never know so maybe you know employers still have the opportunity available they are willing to in some cases they are not willing to because they no longer have that you know opportunity available so it doesn't really hurt you you know going back to them you know asking them on those lines you know uh, whether the position is still available you know i mean maybe 
they can come back to the organization, you know, uh, work on those lines again, you know, contributing to the corporation. But everybody has their own say, you know, employee has his own points, employer has his own points. But, you know, here we are looking into somewhere in, in between the two that, you know, uh, it's not kind of a favor, but, you know, I mean, definitely if the employer having the ability to pay and then, you know, um, the employee willing to go back to the corporation and provide those kind of services that would be good. In some cases, employee, I mean, as per the rules, as it's a future employment, you don't even have to go back. But, you know, uh, still, uh, you know, if, if the I-140 petition, if we are not talking about any individuals here, you know, we are purely talking on uh, the I-140 petition. So if it is, you know, if one is complying with the rules and then, you know, the ability to pay requirement is there and then if the employer is challenged on, you know, with the RFEs that, you know, show us the ability to pay from, you know, those years from the year, you know, from the date labor was filed. If that is the case, you know, they will be handling it and then they are comfortable doing it. You know, on those scenarios, yes, I would say, you know, it, it will benefit both ways because, you know, if the employee is planning to go back and work for the organization, he will contribute. And then, you know, that mutual, they will mutually benefit out of. But, uh, you know, if the employer is still willing to, if they are not coming on board and then, you know, they can still uh, be able to meet that ability to pay, that's good. But, you know, have that clear conversation. It's not like, you know, just filing the petition. So after filing, you know, one needs to really analyze keeping uh, the employee's priority date when it was filed, whether the person, the employee is still with the corporation or not. If not, you know, what are the chances of the survival of that I-140 petition? You know, if the chances are good, I think, you know, the uh, whoever the attorney of the record for that particular corporation will go ahead and then signal it. I think, you know, just based on the employees reaching out to the employer, um, you know, if the employer says yes, that's not how it is going to work, you know, make sure... I know employers definitely make that kind of sound decision. Uh, they'll run it through their, you know, attorneys. I mean, we see a lot of our employers reaching out to us and then, you know, making those kind of decisions. Bottom line, if they both should mutually get benefited out of it, they have to have that kind of strategy and plan in place. So that way, it's not just about the filing, let's say, in future, if they get the RFEs, how are they able to handle it? Because if you file now, if you don't have a strategy, you know, it fires back and it fails, you know, I mean, you'll regret it, you know, I mean, you'll be investing on those, you know, um, employer will be investing uh, on the uh, filing. And then the underlying filing of the 485 will also be affected. That's why, you know, make sure that, you know, uh, you reach out, have a conversation, and then, you know, seek that kind of strategy, whether really a corporation still can show and answer those queries in future once the I-140 is filed and, you know, I mean, if they are RFE on those lines. But, you know, those who are already working, I don't think so there is any problem on those lines. But, you know, those who ever already moved out, you know, trying to come back and seek that kind of opportunity you know, they have to really run that scenario and then have a strategy in place. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. Here also, I need, I need to... Have a question. You know, trying to come back and seek that kind of... Uh, can you... Re I'm requesting... Can I ask a question? Uh, no, uh, can you... I'm requesting everyone keep in mute, maybe, maybe anyone. Uh, open. Just uh, give, give me the few minutes uh, I want to discuss uh, about uh, this downgrade to who, who are not in the same employer so that it, most of the this this clar this, clar this information it will clarify the more, most of them. Just to give me the few few minutes then we can open the calls. Thank you. Uh, uh, Janita, actually I see the most of the cases, um, uh, the most of the Cases are most of the questions coming from uh, who, who are not on employee which are which they had the I-140 approved. So already we discussed. Uh, yes, if employer is ready to help 
is ready to help definitely we go for go go for apply i140 and 485 and then my question is while if they processed they applied downgrade to the eb2 eb3 even apply the 485 uh, will they need to join again the previous company during the application process or when they want to join back is there any necessary to join in future uh, future in, in in particular immigration process can you tell yeah. us a little bit more information on this one Yes, always green card is you know the future employment position. So you know, I mean, necessarily you know, let's say if they are not working as per your scenario, you know, they just go back and ask the employer to do you know that, and then if they still have that kind of opportunity or the position availability, employer agrees to it. So they really don't have to go back to the employer, you know, working for them if you know. Uh, uh corporation has the ability to pay and things like that but when they actually receive the card in hand the green card they should work for the company the reason i'm saying it is maybe if these guys down the road after having their green card goes ahead and want to naturalize uh they have to you know provide you know the the, the employment details related to the past 5 years so if the officer is looking into with whom they got the green card and whether they really worked for that corporation or not might trigger another investigation down the road saying that whether that position was real or whether that position was just created you know uh, they can go back and look into that but definitely i would encourage if the employer agrees you don't have to work but if the employer wants you to come back to their payroll and work definitely you should but the rule is once you have the green card in hand uh try, try to, to work at least the minimal of 6 months uh, you know with them because uh previously you know when before 2017 uh, you know there were no interviews on you know when they are doing the 485s <laughs> so what they used to do is they just you know approve and the card in production and then people used to receive cards but in 2017 october they introduced this and the layer uh, so that we can interview the person and then see the employee to see where he is working and then most of the time before adjudicating the 485s you'll have an rfe uh, asking for the medical because now the window is just opened up for you to file the uh, as per the filing dates to file for the 485 which doesn't mean that you will have your green card immediately but at least you are eligible for having that eads and advance paroles which will give you that great flexibility to deal with your employment you know later on but you have to you know i mean when the interview happens you know the employer definitely you know will address that rfe is based on maybe the medicals and then you know they have to again sign the 485j still stating that the you know that kind of opportunity is available so if the employer states that you know we do have that opportunity available before the interview when they submit you know rfe stating that response to the rfe that 485j definitely you know you should work for them at least 6 months that is the minimal time frame i would say because it should not really cause an investigation later on you know at the time of the nationalization so you know this should not really impact because anything can happen with the uscs they definitely do have the authority to go back and then check on those lines as well okay. thank you thank you very much uh, just i uh, have a question and uh, now on in top of uh, while uh, it means we we are ready to start the uh, 485 the recent days we know that we have to have the medical uh, uh, medical certificates or medical in- documentation now do it really required for this process current or can we have a chance to apply in future uh, i am recommending all my clients to have the medicals done because you know uh, these days you know without simple documents missing uscis you know they have that kind of uh, authority to you know once your petition goes in there they look for the medicals if the medicals are not there they might just and cash your 485 checks and then say reject your petition stating that medicals are not there 
So especially my advice to my clients would be definitely have the medicals done. You know, you still have the entire October month to do it. And then, you know, in your particular area, if you go to the USCIS.gov and then pull up that, you know, put your zip code in there, it will pull up the all the doctors in that area. So when, with one or the another, definitely you will be able to, you know, have those, you know, flexibility to, to get the medicals. I would definitely recommend, you know, submit it with medicals, not to take any risk. And that's what I am advising my clients. Definitely, I am sending it uh, only with medicals. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we are opening for conference call. Yeah. Just uh, say your, your name and uh, you can ask the question. Hello. Uh, I think uh, the conference call got uh, disconnected. Maybe we can we can maybe meanwhile I will connect it to conference call. Uh, just so we can discuss some more questions on. Uh, so. The Vanita, Vanita asked the question, my application was posted from EB3 to EB2, but EB3 being current now, would I be eligible to apply for 485 without new I-140 filing and uh, downgrade it as my both the EB3 and the EB2 with the same employer? I mean, I'm assuming with her question that, you know, she does have both uh, I-140s, one with EB2, uh, you know, category one with EB3, if I'm not wrong. That's what your question prompts me to think on. So if you have both, you can utilize, you know, any one of them. And then, you know, as if it is current with your EB3 category, I would definitely recommend that, uh, you know, uh, to use. But if that is not the case, you only have EB2 with this particular employer, whether your question is, whether I can downgrade. Yes, you can definitely, as long as your employer is supporting you on those lines, go ahead, downgrade it to EB3, and then, you know, file uh, the I-140 and then 485 concurrently. I'm, uh, we had uh, some technical issues. Yeah, just to give you, we had some technical issues. I'm connecting to the conference call, so everyone can ask the question. So just uh, we we connected to the conference call. Next, just to say your name and uh, you can ask the question. Hi, this is Shiva. Hi, Shiva. How are you? Yes, yeah, yeah, Shiva. How are you? Yeah, hi. Um, uh, I have one question. Um, uh, actually, you know, uh, my date is like in EB2. Uh, it's uh, June 2010. Uh, mm -hmm. So mine is EB, under EB2. It's, uh, it's uh, got the filing date current. So I'm going to apply for this thing. So my question is like, if in case I go to India, I have a I, I little emergency go, going to India, like, you know, next month. Soon, like, as soon as possible. So how this works, like, you know, uh, I don't have H1 visa stamping right now. And it looks like embassy also not open. I'm an H1 right now, so... How this works, like if I have to go to India, you know, at this moment. Yeah, Once unfortunately, yeah, yeah. if you have to... If you have to travel, you have that kind of emergency in the next month. You know, one situation you are saying that you don't have the stamping and then, you know, you'll get stuck because of the proclamation. Second thing is, if you are inside the, if you are, as you are inside the country right now, and then if you file the 485, you cannot leave the country unless and until you have the advanced parole approval, because, you know, once you file, leave before those two, your 485 petition is, you know, um, abandoned. So once the four, you leave without the advance parole, you know, um, then uh, it will be denied later on. So I think you have to clearly weigh in, you know, the requirement, the level of emergency that you have to travel and then, you know, filing off the 485 being inside the country. Because if you go out, you cannot go for stamping as per the proclamation. If you are inside the country, once you file, maybe for another four or five months or six months, you might not be able to leave because, you know, uh, for that, you know, for you to do the biometrics and then have that uh, advanced parole, you know, will take time. So you have to really weigh in your emergency which decision you want to make. 
so you were saying like uh, 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 when we approve everything advanced payroll and for i mean he had once get it uh, so all biometrics are done and everything then only we can able to travel what i was thinking assuming like uh, okay one supply and if uh, this situation like if i have to go if in case i go i get the ap in meanwhile so uh, i can i can come back on those you know advanced payroll no, unfortunately so that's, that's not the situation shiva so you know once your 485 is filed and you know even after the biometrics before the biometrics you leave you know i mean as per the advance parole you know uh, as soon as you leave you know i mean your 485 is called abandoned and then you know it will be a denial so you weigh in very carefully mm-hmm. the kind of emergency you have because you know i mean we cannot overrule the emergencies these days you know it's all if it is a family based emergency maybe you see you know if the dates are current you know if you really don't want to take chance and you have you want to be there for that emergency situation because we all do have those kind of situations as humans so you know see weigh in you know whether if the, these dates are you know um, not getting retrogressed and then as uh, visa bulletin you know positively predicts that there is there will be a rapid forward movement maybe you know uh, you have to go in out but the other question in here is as you don't have your you know h1b stamping though you go you get stuck there because the proclamation is in place uh, till december and then they are allowing you know based on you know um, the national interest you don't know what that kind of national interest is whether your employer will be qualified for that you know whether the project will be qualified for that let's say if the administration comes back into you know um, power after the elections you know if they are planning to extend that proclamation you are completely stuck there so please weigh in the emergency and then whether you really have to travel you know how you have to do it i think you know you have to really run through the scenario with your you know corporation immigration attorney on those lines and then do as they advise yeah oh, okay you. so you mean like if i don't if it's like not registered you have to travel if it's not registered then, then should i wait to apply and go india and come back uh, and stamp it and then do it that's the better thing i mean instead of like that is like the better thing but as you just thing. mentioned you don't even have the stamping so you know i mean unless and until there is a national interest yeah, so you know you might not even get your h1b stamped so you, you should just keep that in okay. mind because you know uh, till december and then maybe if it is extended then you are completely permanently losing that kind of opportunity so but if there is a rapid forward movement as predicted you know i mean you have to that is your individual call so you know make a call based on your situation but the, these are the facts thank you last yeah. uh, thank you promoth, thank you i have couple of questions uh, hi, hi pramod how are you so hey i'm good uh, uh, thanks Go ahead. for uh, taking this time and you know getting the questions answered so i have to mean two questions uh one is uh, right now my priority date is missed by a couple of days uh in eb2 or eb3 so first question is eb2 okay um so my cut off date is may 16th uh, i mean my priority date is 16th and i think the cut off is 15th 15th so yes of days is what they were missed so is it worth uh, downgrading uh, at this stage i mean you know uh, yeah i'm not you know i cannot predict how next month's bulletin is but you know the you know visa in the visa bulletin itself they said that rapid forward movement based on that you know i'm assuming that definitely the dates will move forward at least for november and december months so if that is the scenario then you know as you just missed by you know couple of days i think you know it makes sense uh, to wait in there but it all depends upon you know how rapid forward movement it will be so yeah here i want so to press one point i go and do uh, do you know do the eb2 to eb3 downgrade um, you know uh, what sort of things or what sort of uh, things me uh, you know arise right uh, if there are any hello Uh, yeah pramod go ahead you haven't yeah. completed your questions yeah go ahead venkat you're saying something yeah, yeah. the question is you know pramod so pramod pramod my pram, friend pram. is willing to do we need to do ev3 downgrade uh you know so are there any issues or things that i need to keep in mind uh you know if let's say this new i140 gets rejected or something will there be an impact on the current i140 that i have approved under ev2 it depends on yeah it depends 
it depends on how they file your you know i140 most likely you know if it is filed properly it should not impact your current ev2 i140 <coughs> so they can you know if you really want to go ahead and if employer is willing to you know uh, as you are just couple days shy so definitely you know you can go ahead if your employer is willing to but uh, uh, yes if they if it is done properly it should not really impact your ev2 uh, priority date or petition so you could use both Thank you, Pramod. Okay, hello, Mr. Uh, hi, uh, hi, Shiva. One second. One second, Shiva. Just a uh, few minutes. Just one minute. I am requesting you all callers keep it mute because uh, we are trying to give the information. We are getting some noise, so we are unable to provide the proper information. It means we are getting some disturbance. So I am requesting to you all keep it mute so that um, everyone, everyone hear the proper very clearly. Uh, Janita, just I want to stress the point here. The most of the uh, the scenarios, uh, EB two ended is uh, May two thousand eleven. So some some applicants, maybe H one holders, have the next couple of months. Uh, months. I have the I I got the lot of question on this one whether they want to move to downgrade EB two EB three or just to keep for the next uh, visa bulletin or in future visa bulletins. So already you explained. We don't know in November visa bulletin the whether these dates will be remain same or maybe retrograde to back or something. That's why they had a lot of confusion whether whether they go for the uh, 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 downgrade EB two EB three. Maybe you can give the more information on that one so they can clarify. Maybe they can get the understanding and they can make a step and they can they can make a step on that one. If you if you want to add a little bit more, maybe this this will help to them. It, why I am stress this one? Why because I am getting a lot of questions on this one because this is a unhappy situation. So it's it ended at two thousand eleven May. So you can give. You may give the your suggestion on this one. Yeah, I mean, see when uh, yeah, this happened. Yeah, just to give me a moment, uh, uh, Janata will explain. After that, we can take a call. Yeah, just to, I know how it happened in 2013 for the Chinese nationals. You know that time there was a huge momentum in that, and then you know it remained there for a couple months. But we don't know, you know. But definitely, you know, if you um, scroll down at the end of the visa bulletin, you know they do predict, you know, for an upcoming months. So here they are specifically saying rapid forward movement. we don't know for how many months whether it is only for the next month or november december or you know coming months but they definitely predicted it you know leaving it at a positive note in there saying rapid forward movement but i am not i mean i don't know being you know uh, even being an attorney whether you know those will be there but definitely at least i am assuming that for november and december it will stay like this it will not but you know based on how many petitions are downgrading and things like that but you know people should not really feel that later on you know based on janita's advice you know <laughs> we did this i don't want to confirm anything on those lines but if you see that positive note at the end of the visa bulletin you know definitely it is positive and they are saying that it will be rapid forward movement so each individual should be able to make that call as i said previously in the initial discussion you know please make that call whether you really want to you know stay there wait for a couple months to see november and december bulletin or just downgrade it and then you really don't want to miss this kind of opportunity because by downgrading from eb2 to eb3 if the petition is done properly i don't think so there will be impact on your current eb2 so you know uh, definitely it's an individual call so you know but that's what my you know um advice would be yeah, thank you thank you very much i think that that question was when i no one second one second just uh, can say your name so what is your name ramesh ramesh go for uh, go for one is ramesh or Yes. Let's let's go for Ramesh. Ramesh. Yeah, Ramesh. I think I think I have a question related to the previous one. 
So I would go first because so the EB3, right? So most of the guys have a question. Let's say I, my my case is similar. Like I have 22 L June EB EB2. So I'm thinking to porting to EB3 and downgrading to EB3, right? What if once I get the EAD in EB3, so let's say EB2 dates are moving forward, right? EB2 these dates are really moving forward because everybody get into EB3, right? So what are my chances to go to EB2 back for GC? I know yeah, there is I'll, like a, uh, somebody mm-hmm. told me like yeah something there. Yeah. Yeah, as long as your EB2 petition is intact, you know, it is in place, you should definitely uh, will be able to, you know, go ahead with that as you already had, you know, uh, downgraded and filed the 485 if it is still, you know, at that point of time, you can enter file into the EB2. but you know it does take some kind of you know communication with the uscis you know your attorney will be doing that you know we have done in the past you know with the inter filings communicating back and forth because it's just not a simple form like you know for the h1b or whatsoever just to use okay. it that way you will be communicating right. with the uscis office you don't know how quick and how positive they are but you know either you can enter file or file you know uh, the 485 another application so you have two chances at that point of time uh, you can do inter filing where you know these dates can be this 485 can be inter filed the existing one which is pending adjudication or you can do a new one based on you know whatever the corporation attorney advises but you will have two opportunities at that point of time okay so do i do i to stay with the same employer or employer doesn't matter at that time I mean, see, if you are moving out of this particular employer, you know, it matters. Like, you know, whether you stay the hundred and eighty days after your four eighty five filing with this employer, are you moving out with, you know, filing a new four eighty five J at later point of time? You know, you just, um, you know, file the downgrade and then, you know, wanted to use this EAD opportunity to move back to, you know. capture another or uh, you know i mean get another good opportunity with uh, you know some other company so it all depends upon that so you know i mean you have to analyze the situation where you want to stick with the same employer or after 180 days you are moving out with new 485j same or similar lines like ac21 so it all depends uh, vinay Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. I think we'll go with Ramesh next because you know he's trying to ask the question after the Vinay. I think I just answer Vinay's question. No, right? No, 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 Janeta, you did not. No, it was not Vinay. It was Sham or somebody else. Maybe Sham. I think this is dependent. I'm still waiting. Yeah, we'll go with Vinay's question next because he's the one. Yeah, we can go for the Vinay. Then, then, we go, then we can go for the open opportunity. Vinay, can you please be a little bit louder? Can I? Sure. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, then. So thank you for the opportunity. So my leading question to that is, uh, you know, right now I'm with a. I recently moved to a new employer, but my old employer is in good terms with me and is willing to do. uh my i485 petition uh now if i were to go back to my old employer you know mm-hmm. and start working for him uh does it does it have to be like right now or do i have like two or three months time before i can do that and another question is you now the soc codes or you know with which my first form was filed does my uh new job after like 180 days working with my old employer uh, will it have to be with the same soc code or can i move into like managerial positions of the higher positions that i might get okay so i mean it depends on how your employer wants to you know if he wants you to come back and work with him right now so you know you should do so but if he is willing to you know wait uh you know to join his company you know later on once you have the card or ead card or the actual green card it all depends upon that but for the next question on the ac21 moving out of the corporation using the you know 485j the ac21 on the same or similar titles you know i would request you know because each and every corporation has a policy so you know i mean it should be bottom line you know same or similar so make sure that uh, whenever you are moving out and trying to update the uscis with that 485j 
previously we used to just uh, you know write a letter for the ac21 and do now we have in this convenient form the 485j to update them that you moved out so make sure you know analyzing the labor ahead of time whatever the labor approval that you have you know um your 485 is based out of you know the original 1140 filing you have to but i would say you know i mean that's sort escalation in that kind of uh, you know i mean if you are just a developer and then you know after 6 months you are moving to the you know managerial position uh, that would yeah that would definitely and that is my form of file like 10 years ago so definitely there is a lot of growth that happened in 10 years mm-hmm. so that should have to be like oriented like a developer's position or like can it be a little more than that i mean uh, the the rules definitely say that it is same or similar so it all depends upon what same or similar okay. what your you know soc code was on the labor so you know it should be analyzed when you you, you know, know even, even before, before moving to the new employer accepting that role and then you know that for you know getting that 485 485 j done but yeah you you will definitely have that flexibility to you know move around and then accepting those kind of new opportunities Okay. Thank you, Vinay. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, hello. I, I think we'll go with Upender yeah, next. Hello. Yeah. Uh, this is Upender. Yeah. Um, I'm. I was with Empire Three. Then I moved to Empire. Be a little bit louder, Upender. So There's a background disturbance. I I can't hear you properly. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm actually yeah. Empire uh, A B B right now because I was with Empire A. so my date was uh, my date is current right now for the eb2 uh, mm-hmm. and eb3 as well so mm-hmm. my pay date is 2010 december mm-hmm. uh, my current empire filed the form mm-hmm. uh, is it the right time to go back to my old employer how long ago your form was filed uh they just filed last month okay okay see it depends upon you know the perm is taking at least you know more than 5 months around you know 6 months in some you know because of you know the case load and then you know the it the dates fluctuate but um, yeah if your employer you know filed the perm you know it depends upon you know what kind of call you want to make in here just wait for the perm approval and then as your dates are current under the eb2 right now as you said december 2010 you know the dates are up till 15th may uh, 2011 hoping that you know it will remain same or move forward so you will have an opportunity as soon as the perm is approved uh, to premium process the i140 and the dates will be current so you can also do the 485 at the same time because you know as you will be filing the i140 with the original labor so the premium process will be accepted so that's what i would advise but you know it all depends upon the dates you know how um, they are going to i don't think they will come back before that or you know uh, it, it all depends upon you have to take that call but as i said you know time and again in in this discussion that you know um the positive note is there for us for in that visa bulletin that you know there is a you know a rapid forward movement is stated so hoping you know keeping that in mind but if you really don't want to wait and then you know if your previous employer can accept your you know uh if he is willing to do that uh, as we discussed uh, at the initial you know um you know uh, t- you know minutes of this call um you can still do so on those lines as well so it is up to you now you have two opportunities but you know um make sure that you know uh, you are um utilizing them properly yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you thank you if i move back to them yep yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, this is yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, please give me a second actually i'm requesting requesting every everyone please make a very crispy question so we have a lot of calls we need to try to clarify it to everyone just understanding the situation make a crispy question maybe very you can short question so that everyone get a chance to ask their questions yeah we, we can go for the next okay. can you okay. say I, you can can I, uh, this is yeah ramesh Ramesh, Ma'am, I let, have one let me go for let let me go for Ramesh. Then we can the first we go for Ramesh. Ramesh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you uh, very much for taking my call. 
um my situation is i am like my i am in eb2 my priority date is september 2010 and my family is stuck in india and they don't have any valid visa uh, i don't know you already been answered this call or not but i joined late so i'm asking again sorry for that i think so we answered any, that for uh, yeah go ahead covid exemptions from the government like you know for this reason Uh, for this specific reason you know no but uh, you know uh, as you are inside the country and then you know if they don't have a valid visa you know they can still go you know as per the appointments that are available you know um, uh, and after the proclamation you know they gave some of the exemptions if the spouse is here inside the country as long as you are able to get the appointment uh, your spouse uh, the dependents can get the appointments they should go utilize that and you know uh, come here so that way you know you can file everything together that's what i would recommend but no covid exemptions especially okay. on those lines so i was thinking like an you know, emergency uh, appointment request you can do that because you are here yeah you are here so you know definitely they can request based on whether they honor it or not because they are individually prioritizing you know each case you know based on those circumstances so definitely i would advise you know, reach out to them through emails and you know write them the scenarios so that way they can honor it yeah okay can you direct to hyderabad ma'am Ramesh, uh, Ramesh, I think uh, you maybe you you need to reach out to the attorney. Maybe you can reach okay. out to the Janata. Right. She will give the more information on this one. This is a the specific case. Recent, okay. Recently, we see the uh, if you apply the any uh, any specific conditions, uh, the USCIS is giving the visas. Maybe you can reach out to the Janata. She can guide you, and you can proceed yeah. on that. Yeah, thank you. thank you for your call. Yeah, yeah. We can go for yeah. next. No, one second. Yeah, Raghu, we can go for Raghu. Yeah, Raghu, you can ask the question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for answering so many questions. Uh, uh, I have like um, uh, you have already answered that my date is May uh, June fifteenth two thousand eleven EB two. Uh, but my employer is little bit hesitant to downgrade is telling the prevailing wage changes might affect uh, other employees if there is any denial so like uh, how can i convince my employer to downgrade? see if you if you met uh, if you are there in the eb2 then you know definitely downgrading and then you know meeting you know the wages really doesn't change so you know you are at the same level how he showed the ability to pay on the eb2 that will remain the same as well so you just have to you know i mean it's all the willingness of the employer what they really want to do but if he is willing you know that is when it will move forward but the requirements you will be meeting and you know wage levels you know it remains the same so i'm not really sure you know mm-hmm. what concerns him so it's not an upgrade it's a downgrade so yeah i, okay. I think so raghu uh, why was it premium is not allowed right uh, i140 if, if yeah if one doesn't have you know definitely if somebody is trying to downgrade and refile the i140 make sure that you are aware you know the rule says that you cannot premium process the reason in the underlying reason for it would be when your labor got approved and then the i140 uh, was submitted for the initial filing the original labor already was submitted with the i140 so as uh, you know in in the downgrading process you know if you don't have the original labor because you will be ha- using a copy of whatever is on the file so USCIS uh, you know regularly you know states that as they have to look out for that copy in their you know database they don't really entertain you know the premium process but we are also he- hearing you know some of the from some of the unreliable sources that they might accept so what i would say is just go ahead and do premium process if they accept it that's good well and good and then if they don't your premium form and check will come back and then rest of the petition will be accepted yeah okay thanks uh, thank ramesh you, thank uh, thanks so raghu uh, uh, can i go to the next one yeah yeah we have the shiva and abhishek question maybe we can go for I'm, shiva uh, this is shiva i am going for that thank you thanks for taking my call uh i am processing eb3 in 2014 i am have a i140 approved with the two employer i am i am with now third employer 
from my third employer they applied a firm one month back my question is that i checked with my third employer attorney few days back and they said that yes we can able to process your application for a 485 uh, but when i check uh, when i talk to other attorney even i so far i heard the conversation we cannot do it so is there any way we can do it even though just you, applying a firm one month back no you are if it is eb1 no labor required that's what it would be possible filing i140 and 485 here in your situation you definitely need to have an approved you know uh, i140 uh, so you know uh, to move forward because especially if it is the same offer with uh, the third employer but you know if you know once they have the i140 approval you know at the time of i140 application they can try to port those dates and then do it but i don't think so if you don't have the labor approval um, there is no way that you can do it with your current third employer sure okay yeah okay yeah because just they apply form one month back that's what i got at least the form should uh, be approved so Oh, yeah. not yet. Firm is not yet approved. Okay, thank you. I think uh, thank Hello, you, Shivani. One last question. Maybe we can go Hello? for Abhijit. Uh-huh. Maybe Abhijit in call. Maybe we can take a call, Abhijit. If not, uh, yeah. Hi, uh, ma'am. Uh, Sir, hi. This is Abhijit. Hi. Yeah, Abhijit. You yeah you can uh, you can ask uh, your question. I have uh, some uh, yeah I have some generic question. Uh, just got confused with the. so basically what i understood is like we got a spillover from uh, family based into eb category and uh, this eb category basically it should uh, spillover into eb1 eb2 and then eb3 but i am not sure why like eb3 went ahead of eb2 that is my one question and second question if if people start downgrading are they both are they in the both the queue or eb1 like eb2 and eb3 or they will be only in the eb3 queue and they won't be in the eb So they will be removed out of EB2. So EB2 also starts moving. So these are. I'll answer your second question first because you know I don't yeah. have an answer for your first question. That's a question for the you know Department of State or the USCIS. So yes, you know um, wh- when a person downgrades from you know EB2 to EB3, yes, if it is done properly, so they will have you know both EB2 will not really get impacted. So you know, they can move forward with the 485 filing. Okay, yeah. so the people who don't downgrade, they uh, like uh, there there is no chance. Like like if EB two guy don't downgrade, uh, like it's not good for him, right? Like he as the downgrade. dates are there, you know whatever we are seeing, you know right now it's May two thousand and eleven. Let's say in the next two uh, coming months, we subalterns move forward for EB two. That's uh, great news for them as well. But we are. not talking in the future tends we are only talking about the current october visa bulletin because i cannot predict what is going on in the november and december uh, as per the positive note in the you know bulletin you can see they stated that there will be a rapid forward movement so we just have to wait and see how it goes but hopefully it will be a forward movement but here we are analyzing the situation only based on the october visa bulletin Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Abhijit. Okay. Ma'am, hi. 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 Hi
மீனிங் <laughs> Oh. it's not that they cannot yes it's a employer's property whenever they want you know if the position is no longer available they'll just go ahead and withdraw it but the ru- the meaning of the rule to conclude is though the employer withdraws it in after 180 days you can still be able to utilize it for your further h extensions beyond the 6 year time frame that's okay. what the rule says yeah. so if he withdraws oh. it can the labor uh, still valid uh, generator they can refile they can refile if they want to though they withdraw unless and until it is something not related to the fraud or misrepresentation they can still you know um, refile and then see how it goes yeah then we can file the 485 okay. 140 concurrently right yeah. that's correct thank you thank you krishna let me let me remain krishna you can ask question krishna yeah thank thank you sir thank you so much ma'am uh, uh, for giving me this opportunity so one question uh, this might be a generic question ma'am uh, uh, so um, my previous employer has the eb2 uh, approved uh, in my case and uh, uh, which is more advisable so i have the opportunity of moving to the previous employer and then apply 485 and i also have the opportunity of working with the current employer but my previous employer is still willing to do the uh, uh, documentation for me which is more advisable and let's say for example if my previous employer files the 485 um, uh, uh, me working with the current employer and let's say in 3 or 4 months if i move to the previous employer right uh, will that suffice like uh, or else in future i still have to like once i get the green card i still have to work with that previous employer for 6 months That's yes yeah after getting the green card you know uh, the rule says that at least you have to it's better you work with them at least for 6 months right away if the employer is willing to you know take it forward you really don't have to you know join them as long as you know all the requirements are met yeah that can happen but at least i would advise you know for your uh, future you know nationalization perspective it's better you stick with uh, at least for 6 months with this corporation once you have the green card in hand okay so that 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 means that uh, whenever we have a green card uh, it's mandatory for us to stick to that given corporation for 6 months is it that's correct because i mean let's say if the corporation doesn't have before make sure one thing these days as per the 2017 you know reg, the, you know rule that came in they are doing most of the time um queries before they approve your uh, 485 they want to check whether you know especially for the medicals they also want to check whether you are still with the same employer in this scenario the employer will be filing the 485j you know filling it out and giving it to you saying that we still have the position right so when you naturalize you know you will provide past 5 years of employment and then say that okay employer said they have a position by signing the 485j but looks like he never joined you know whether the position is real or there is a fraud you know the investigation can go on on those lines you know i mean it's uh, the ideal recommendation would be it's it benefits you know both of you if you stick with him at least the minimal of a 6 months yes. 180 days so yeah. thank you we can in line rabi is now ஏபிடிங்ரேடிங்ரேடிங்ரேடிங்ரேடிங்ரேடிங்ரேடிங்ரேடிங்ரேடிங்ரேடிங்ரேடிங்ரேடிங்ரேடிங்ரேடிங்
485 process yeah as there is a sudden surge so in all of these it. things lot of cases uh, you know will be filed in the october month and then there is an increase to file you know um, filing uh, then case load will go up so cannot predict on the timelines but yes based on the case load definitely it might increase and as there is as it cannot be done in premium you know um, they, especially i140 so uh, mm -hmm. it might take some time you know my understanding is that at least i would you know keep a buffer of 6 to 8 months time frame on those lines and unless and until your i140 approves you will not be able to get the ead and advance parole they'll be recepted but they will be still waiting for the underlying petition to get adjudicated yeah. thank you thank you we can go for hi, next hi, question hi this is dheeraj hi question. this is this is dheeraj no, yeah dheeraj we can go for dheeraj question yes hi uh, yeah thank you for the opportunity uh, both of you so i have a question in regards to the 485j uh, which is like basically the the portability clause uh, it's kind of like i'm trying to read between the lines and it says that you have to file the 485 with the previous employer or can you go with the current employer's employment see 485j is you know um, the form that came in as you know bridging between you know previously we never had any form if we have to inform to the uscis you know we just used to write you know, a letter to the uscis quoting the rule of ac21 and then saying that you know he moved and then the new employment is based out of you know the same or similar role but they made our job more easier by you know introducing this 485j which you know i mean can be used you know if you are with your current employer you don't need the 485j you know an employment confirmation would be fine but i would still recommend go ahead and then you know do the 485j but if you are um, you know with the previous em filing with the based on the previous employer definitely you need the 485j signature so in either ways i would definitely recommend 485j submitting along with the, so the, the application so, so, okay so the situation is like the previous employers the the priority date is current and everything but the new employer is still in the prevailing wage stage so my question is like can we use the new employer uh, like with the similar lines to file the 485 no the you said uh, with your with your new with your new employer do you have an i140 approval no 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 if you don't have you, if you are still at the prevailing wage determination you cannot do anything on the 485j with your current employer you at least need to have the labor approval and then you know where the dates are current you can file the i140 and 485 but if you are at the initial stage i don't think so that's going to help you in any way with your current employer well, so you have to the employer is willing to sign it we can go for it right if the previous employer is willing to sign it yes you can go ahead with the previous employer only there is nothing to do with your current employer on those lines okay now oh, got it thank you very much you are welcome yeah. thank you hi, uh, hi. We can uh, hi. my name is ravi this is vijay hello hello uh, i hear the vijay and ravi ravi sorry yeah no. Yeah, okay, we can ahead. go for Ravi. Yeah, Ravi, you can go for. Uh, okay, Ravi. Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. This is Ravi. Uh, hi. Yeah, uh, I know everyone talking about. This. Thank you for taking question. Uh, and everyone talking about. This is Ravi. Yeah. I'm sorry, I so, said Ravi. <laughs> okay. And that's no, you, you, I'm also Ravi. Like, I'm Ravi, and said, somebody catch up. Okay, we'll answer oh. both Ravis. One no, after this is also Ravi. I said before. Okay. Okay. No, Ravi. We'll answer okay. both of you. So, yeah, my name you know, is Ravi Mukhopadhyay. Go ahead. Uh huh. Yeah, my. Thank you. My name is Ravi Mukhopadhyay. So actually, posted on um, Facebook also. So uh, uh, thank you for taking time and answering. Uh, my question should be kind of general. Um, I, I can't hear you, Ravi. Please be a little bit louder and clear. Oh. I think we okay. have some noise. Hopefully, it's better maybe. now. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Little bit better, yes. yeah. Please be loud. Uh, yes. My question for you, you know, yeah. Thank you. So you know, we we are talking a lot about EB two to three downgrade. So my date is current with EB two. So is this uh, how this affects really for the final green card dates? Uh, I just want to understand in long term uh, this downgrade versus current um, you know going uh, uh, if it if it affects. See, uh, it all. Question. Yeah. The second yeah. question is. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
go ahead no no go ahead with your second question ravi okay second question right now i just googled and i see it's uh, taking about 9 uh, uh, months to 2 years or 3 years for just to process this 485 so you answered this some way of uh, you know earlier but uh, if any emergency reason if i travel to india for you know within this 9 months not, not right away uh, in next year whatever and if uh, if the h1 get approved i mean got the stamping and come back is this completely interrupted and do i need to start all over uh, that's the second okay question. for your first question you know how Thank it's you. going to affect in the long run so, so you know as long, long as you know you just have to follow the every month visa bulletin where the dates are things mm-hmm. like that because you know it's a uh, Uh, state department's uh, job and then uscs confirming you know what dates they are accepting so you know uh, that's how it is you know whether upgrading or downgrading it's all based on the visa bulletin so i cannot predict on the future ones but for your second question as long as you file your 485 and then when you have your advance parole and ead you can definitely travel in and out of the country so you know it doesn't um, considered as abandonment after the advance parole is received if you travel but if you travel before yes it is considered as an abandonment and you might have a 485 denial so make sure you are attending those biometrics and then having that advance parole then make sure to do a travel plans oh okay so that's biometrics so it's not only biometrics you have to have your card. combo card if you are filing the 485 okay. ead and advance parole together you will have a combo card with ead and advance oh. parole so make sure you have that before you travel without that you cannot got it so all three can be filed if i decide to yeah if you decide that you know you want to go ahead and then travel on the h1b if the emergency situation arises but you are jeopardizing your 485 filing because it will be considered as abandonment so make sure that you are you know having that informed decision make sure whenever you are leaving let your attorney know let your employer know so that way at least you know yeah, uh, yeah. they will prompt you on those lines yeah, yeah. thank, thank you. you ravi and on last generic question also may be helpful for no, R- ravi uh, it means uh, heard like uh, this data, data i think this is other ravi because, right uh, earlier uh, no the same one No, Ravi, please limit Sorry. your question. Maybe we it? have a lot. I, I, Ravi, Ravi, I cannot comment okay. on the data okay. how it is moving forward. So you know, I think we'll go for that. No, no, Ravi. no, no. It's not about. Okay, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Ravi. Yeah, yeah we can go for Ravi. another Ravi. Ravi. Can I ask? Uh, hi. Uh, thank you. Thanks to both of you for uh, answering uh, these questions. I have two questions. So the first question is during the downgrade process. Uh, is it really required any justification uh, from the employers like uh, why they are downgrading and the second question is uh, so after getting the ead and if if i'm if i want to continue to the h1 as a fall back option and if i am uh, traveling to abroad and if while coming back can i use ead payroll uh, for only for traveling and still uh, can i continue my h1 work visa for the a uh, visa pop i mean uh, the working purpose so i don't think so there is a specific thing uscis that you know they will a- come back and ask you know hey why you are downgrading but they have their own way of rfing saying that you know hey whether the employer meets the ability to pay or not so they can rfe so in the initial call i think you know we discussed about all of those things you know ability to pay requirement and all not only yours let's say you know if the corporation has 10 or 20 others they can rfe on them too so it is all based on that but they i don't think you know i never experienced in my past um, you know 12 years of uh, um experience uh, uscs coming back and asking why are you downgrading because if you meet the requirements you can do so when the priority dates are current but as i said they can rfe for the ability to pay on the employer lines and then for your second question yes you know you can still maintain that fall back h1b status and then you can travel in and out using your advance parole but you have to either use okay, you know the you. h1b or the ead for your work either not both so you know you have to stick for one but yes you know you don't you no longer have to go for the visa stamping you can use your advance parole to travel in and out of the country venkat shall we take the questions Hi, just up. next yeah. 10 15 minutes Hi, because as you know is a busy time for us so. this is yeah, uh, yeah. 
Hi, Mr. Yes, Hari. Shall I go ahead? One minute. One minute. It means already Hello? actually we scheduled for one hour, but uh, we already been in a uh, fast forty minutes. So just to take another ten to fifteen minutes. The question we are taking the question for next ten to minutes. Ten to. And if I, if I didn't please, answer anybody's question, so please try to reach out to you know any attorney or to us so that way we can schedule some appointments for you. Yes, please. I'm requesting. Hey, please make. Hey, this is Vijay. I was on the line. Can I ask? Yes. Yeah. Please limit your questions. Yeah. Hello. Please limit. Yeah, Vijay, you can ask the question. Hello. Go ahead. Yes. 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 Thank uh, you. Um. Uh, my question is first. Thank you for taking the call. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, my question is: I'm on EB2 July 2000, which is July. July what? I can't hear you. Uh, from the July 2011 okay. on EB2. Mm -hmm. So I'm like 40 days from the cutoff date. So um, now there is a huge uh, slew of applicants. that are downgrading from EB2 to EB3 uh and if i do that too and because and i am only 40 days along the cut off line should i wait for the next few bulletins or should i downgrade number 1 number 2 is if in case a lot of applicants come on EB3 line and the EB2 line keeps moving forward because it might take 9 months or 1 year as you mentioned just previously that it might take for me to downgrade to eb3 and now the eb2 line keeps moving how will i be able to go back again on the same time or in my yeah i think we answered this question you know at the initiation of the call but you know i'll answer it again for you so yeah i mean you know we are hearing that you know there is a huge filing that is going to happen but we don't know how many will file because it's all with the employer support so i think somebody should really mute their conversation yeah we are hearing the lack yeah Noise. i mean for your question uh, yeah i mean you know if you downgrade it i mean if you are just you know a um, uh, few days or few months you know definitely we are assuming that there's going to be a november and december forward movement but you know nobody can predict on those lines till the department of state okay. and comes back you know issues on those lines the you know the bulletin but um, if your employer is willing to you can downgrade but yes you can also as long as your you know if it is eb3 is filed properly the downgrade you still will have the eb2 application which will not get impact you can file on those lines too then you know if you already filed the 485 there is an opportunity for you to interfile the 485 with that one yeah thank you janita uh, thank just you just we we will take only the next two thank you yeah, yes one second naga we will take the yeah, rupesh and naga just to give a minute we will take uh, next three questions and we will stop the conference calls Anyway, this video will be available on Telugu and our radio Facebook. And yeah, Venkat, I think YouTube. I have a request uh, from uh, you know Vilas asking us to do for another thirty minutes. So, okay, okay, we'll go ahead and continue this for another thirty minutes, but we'll close down exactly after thirty minutes. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank, thank you, Venkat, for accepting. Yeah, accepting. Uh, I think we can thank both of you for your time. You're welcome. Yeah, okay. go ahead, please. Venkat, go ahead, please. Yes. Okay. So uh, my case is I have uh, uh, I changed three employers. So employer one has uh, filed my I-140 and uh, still valid, and I moved to employer two where my perm has been uh, filed and it's approved. But I I moved on to the employer three. Employer three has filed my perm now and it's been five months. Uh, my original I-140 is with uh, EB3. In this case, can I go back to the employer two and uh, refile 140 with them? do you you said that you know you got the perm approved and then the i140 was also filed with employer 2 no it was not filed uh, okay so is it still valid with, uh, oh okay so yeah it's a oh. it was it was withdrawn uh, then you withdrawn. mean to say the perm is the labor is withdrawn labor is withdrawn after approval I mean, they usually they cannot they withdraw the file. yeah uh, yeah i think the 6 months time frame whatever the validity time frame that have expired so you know there is um, you know no way that you can but of course you can definitely refile that 
with employer two. Uh, not with employer two because you know I mean they don't have um, you know the original. They did not file uh, the original petition, so I don't think they can uh, employer two can go for that. So. Since you answered earlier question, basically I have to still wait for my employer three to complete my form and then file for the four eighty five concurrent. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. If the dates are current, then you know at the I-140 time frame, port before filing the I-140, port the employer A's uh, priority date that you have on that I-140 to this uh, you know third employer, and then you know file concurrently I-140 and 485. Or if the employer one is willing to do that, so you know you can of course uh, you know go with them if the opportunity is still available. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We can we can take the next call from Naga. We can take call from Naga. Ah, uh, uh, sure. Uh, I uh, th thank you both. Thank you both for your time and for this platform. I'll 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 keep the question simple. Uh, I have an EB3 with my previous employer, and I also have EB2 with my current employer, and both both of them are September 2010. Now both these companies are willing to file adjustment of status for me. Now, which one should I prefer? Should I go for EB3 of my previous employer or EB2 of current employer? I think you should go with the EB2 because you know the priority dates and the category really matters there because you know of course you have the eligibility on both lines, but you know when the spillover happens, you know everything coming back, it goes to EB1, two, and three in those you know categorical categorical order. So I would definitely advise you prefer for the EB2. so sure, because you definitely don't have to worry about you know just the filing date so you know yours is a final action date i would definitely go with uh, you know um, eb2 okay but again my date is september 2010 oh september 2010 10 2010 no oh, okay so final action dates are only september 2009 for okay i Yeah, still on those lines. Also, I would still advise, you know, keeping the EB two. That's what I would advise. Oh sure, thank you, Jalata. Yeah. Okay, okay. thank you, Naga. One question. Yes, Rini, you go for go for it. Yeah, yes, Rini. Ah, you you actually thanks to both. Uh, you answered about the families that in India and uh, asking them to travel here in case like uh, there is uh, no chance for them to travel back because of the. uh visa unavailable and we can't get the visa to come back in coming 2 to 3 months what would be the best uh, approach you suggest us to go ahead with the with the with the, with the dependent uh, filing yeah best approach would be you still maintain your h1b as a fallback status so they could have that visa and travel back and if the dates remain current by the time they enter you can just you know uh, do the 485 for them as well hello So you you are not suggesting any consular processing in this case. That, I mean, I, I wouldn't right. really. Uh, so you know because Radio it takes time. So if you are willing to you know It's make your long family long. wait outside for those kind of consular process, because you know here the difference between the adjustment of status and the consular process is you know now the file is with the USCIS. You know uh, it has to be triggered to send it out to the National Visa Center. That's when from there it goes to the consular process. So it takes time. and then there is no direct form or things like that that we can do so you know back and forth communication takes some time and sometimes they just sit on that for several years also not even making a call on that one so you know i mean it's up to you so okay, okay. thank you very much oh, okay thank you srini yeah thank you thank you very much yeah we can go for next question if you if anyone hi have. hi this is sridhi khan i have a uh, question Um, yes please go ahead yeah my question is um I, my priority date is 2014 and what i have been hearing is you know there is a uh, priority date movement in the upcoming month so um, is it possible for me i mean is it recommended for me to downgrade now or wait because my priority date is jan 2014 in eb2 I would recommend downgrading it because right now we are at May 2011. So anyway, give and take, we are seeing four years. So I'm not really sure whether that will move that quick 
up till four years, but it might be possible. So I'm not predicting on that, but I would definitely advise if it is a possible option for you to go ahead, you know, downgrade it because if that date goes forward, you can use both. So I would say yes, you know, go ahead and downgrade it right now. Right. So because there's a huge difference in the years. Okay. Uh, the other question that I have is now that I have I want for the approval for EB two, right? If I downgrade and my EB three I want for the approval also, I get it. Just in case, as others others have asked you, is EB two priority date, you know, or the green card filing date moves forward, then EB three can I still use my old I one for the approval to file for the green card? Yes, you can, and then you know uh, you can use those dates for filing. Um, you know, using those current dates, and then you can interfile um, with the current. You know, using whatever the 485 is already there on the file, or you can you know go ahead with the new. But yes, definitely you can use that. So I can use both, right? EB2, and if I downgrade, I can use EB3. If I'm if I want to opt, whichever is coming first, I can. I mean, that is that correct. One, yes. Right? Yes. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we can go for next call. Ajay. Yeah, okay. Janetha, you answered the earlier question. If withdraws the one forty, right? Can the employer still use the existing? I mean, the same firm labor to refile? Yeah, I mean, if the I one forty is withdrawn, if the original I one forty was filed within the time frame and validity dates of the firm. Yes, they can refile, as I said, unless and until it was withdrawn for you know misrepresentation or for fraud. Okay, so they can still use the the old. Yeah, by by refiling, they are still stating again that they do have the opportunity available. They can do that, unless until you know I stated that uh, you know if it is withdrawn or you know prompted the revoke from the USCIS for fraud and misrepresentation basis. Thank you. Hello, okay. this is Chandra. I have one question. Yeah. Yes, Chandra. Yes. Yeah. So thanks, thanks for taking this call. So I have one quick question. Like, you no, know, yes. Yesterday I spoke to my previous employer. He said uh, they file as a current employer, not for the future employment. So in this case, is it a valid uh, answer, and uh, can they file it for uh, eighty five? I see what uh, he is talking about. You know, when they file the perm, you know, there is a question in there saying that whether you are currently employed with them or not. so that doesn't mean that you know it's a current filing of course uh, all the green card processes you know this is a future employment offer so they can still go ahead if they are willing to for yours but it's just that small thing there whether you are working with them or not maybe at that point of time you are working with them so that yes tick mark would have been given that you are working with them but that doesn't restrict your employer go, going ahead Thank you. Thanks for answering it. And I have another question. So if, right now, if they file it, I don't need to go immediately and join the company because this will be done on Saturday. I don't want to join there. I so hope your employer is not the... listening to this because <laughs> you, you are trying to <laughs> talking about the uncertainty and again trying to you know uh, <laughs> take advantage of the employer. So you know, uh, yes, yeah, you know, if there is uncertainty, case, <laughs> uncertainty, if you still want to go this, ahead with in your. In this case. Yeah, Yeah, in this case, uh, we definitely work with the previous employer, and uh, if both are comfortable, then go for uh, apply the process as a good norms. It's always so give and take. Future, yeah, give and take. In future, yeah. even if you go for with, if you go for with good norms, in future you don't see any issues. Maybe it won't trigger any issues on mm -hmm. immigration process. The immigration process. This is not yeah, ended today. It. So it will it will continue for and uh, until you get the green card. So you have to have the yeah, clear, clear on the your status to maintain. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. I mean, we don't have to hear who your employer is, but you know, <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. As long as you know he's you know uh, willing to you know take that and then you know willing to file for you, yes, definitely. I'm just joking. <laughs> we have been seriously <laughs> answering those questions, so you know, just for fun. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks I, for talking. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, so, hey, we can go for next hey, question. Vijay here, Vijay Kumar here. Hi, Vijay. Hello. Yeah, Vijay. 
Hello, hey, hey, I have a question. Uh, my priority date date is August um, 2013, mm-hmm. and uh, I have an EB2 from previous employer and from the current employer. Do you think uh, I can downgrade? And I, my daughter is in the middle school, seventh grade. So, do you think it's, if I downgrade, it's going to benefit her in some way? Or uh, so you said you have EB2 and EB3 both. Um. No, no, I have EB2 with both previous employer and with the current employer. Oh, okay, okay. I think yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, uh, what is your priority date? Two thousand fourteen. You said thirteen. Yeah, two thousand thirteen. Uh, August. Okay, okay. August. I think it will benefit you if you go ahead and then you know um, downgrade it and file for the four eighty five because you know it's a good opportunity uh, for your daughter as well if she really wants to volunteer. You know, uh, her time. You know, during her high school and then you know uh, in middle school. You know, if she has to. um she will have her own ead yeah. and advance parole so yes i would definitely recommend downgrading it okay thank okay, you okay cool. thank you so much thank you very much welcome hello ram here go ahead ram yes ram yeah yeah actually uh, my daughter is uh, 20 years and my priority date is uh, uh, june 1st 2011 mm-hmm. so uh, should i uh, downgrade or Uh, if if I if if I am waiting for next month and if it is moving, then can I do on my own attorney? Can I file it or should I go with uh, employer? If so either way, yeah. Either way, you need your employer support on both. Whether you are downgrading it right now or just waiting for the next month to become current. So you know, I mean, uh, you need that kind of you know. You cannot do it all by yourself because you have to you know file the four eighty five J along with it. So definitely, you will be needing employer support. Uh, for that, so it's up to you whether you want to, you know, uh, wait and then or downgrade it. Yeah. No, I think. Uh, oh, Shiva. Uh, yeah, Janata, I think it's a good point here. Right. You know, most of the most of the uh, families, maybe their daughters or sons, are getting to twenty years or twenty-one years. Yeah, aged out. Maybe so, yeah. aged out. It means if turned about twenty-one years, they fall into the the same. uh scenarios what we faced a long time so i think uh, this is a very good opportunity to use and downgrade and get benefited to their daughters and sons yeah you also have to keep in mind one thing when the i140 was filed whether you included your daughters or sons who are aging out as a derivative beneficiaries i'm sure most of the time you guys do you know uh, you know just weigh in talking to your attorney on the cspa act and then see you know how it can be done Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Hi. Hello. I have a question. Hari. Just to mention your name so that we it will get clear to us to Hari. call. Call. Yeah, Hari. Yeah. Go for question. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Janata Garu. Um, I know most of the people already asked the question. So when we downgrade from EB two to EB three, of course we will have both EB two and EB three options. Um, so. Uh, after nine months, when we get the EAD, so this is general question for so many people. So, so after one year, whether we, you know, after nine months maybe, uh, if we get the EAD with EB three, that's fine. Then after six months of EAD, let's say after one one and a half year, if we change to the different employer, by, by the time if we don't get the green card, if we get a chance, if we have to change the employer. by the time uh, still green card dates are not you know in the line of eb3 but um till with the, the new employer uh, we can have the option with the uh, use of eb2 and eb3 both dates priority dates when uh, when the green, actual green card is mm-hmm. coming into the line Yeah, yeah, I mean, what? Yeah, what? I I understood your question. So you know, you basically want to get ahead and then you know stay in the line whichever is going forward and gets you that green card. I understood that question. So yes, you know, if you file for EB three and then you know the dates of EB two are moving forward, yes, you know whether you can you know do on the similar lines when the EB two dates become current, you can always inter file the four eighty five. Yes, you will have that opportunity to do so. But it will be not the same employer. If there is a chance of moving to different employers. That's what. Uh huh. 
yeah i mean with moving to a different employer you know you should still have all the underlying base petitions but you know if you are moving to the third employer that you you know the same or similar job opportunities but you if you want to avail the situation of you know whichever line is you know going quicker then you should meet the underlying requirements where you should have that accrued i140 having the date quoted then only you will be able to so that third employer should apply the i140 again At that's what i would if, if if that's what you are looking into having that queue speed up you know having you know with a third employer yes hi this, this is sandeep i have a question for, uh, janata garu this is hi, not for the janata. speed up actually so this after getting the ead after 6 months if, even though the green card line is still far away for both eb2 and eb3 maybe you know after 6 months or 1 year change to different employer so that employer should uh, find the i140 that is possible and to have the both uh, opportunities to utilize uh, eb2 or eb3 to green card that's what i said you are trying to cut short the line and then be moving forward stay in the line which goes for the underlying requirements for that 485 which technically means that you know they should have an i140 approved with that priority date gotcha thank you hi this is sandeep i have a question hey yes sandeep yeah so um i i have a priority date with my previous employer uh, of june 2016 case filed in eb2 last year i joined a new employer who has not filed my uh, perm or uh, like pro- not initiated my process yet uh, what should i do in this situation like uh, they have been giving me an excuse due to covid but with the moments of uh, dates do i still have an option to downgrade with my previous employer or like my previous petition or i have to wait for my current employer to file a process how should what, I what is your what is your priority date sorry i i know eb2 what did what is the priority june 2016 date? oh june 2016. 2016 okay okay 2016 i think as per the filing dates also you know i mean even for the eb3 you will not be but yes you know maybe if we soon 2016 you said right yes that is correct okay okay so i think you have to prepare yourself to see you know if the previous employer agrees when that date become current on the eb3 chart the filing action filing date chart so you know if the employer is willing to that's what i would recommend so w- what can okay. the previous employer do like can they still continue Hi. with the process Yeah. I mean, once the dates become current, right now, as per your priority date, it's yeah. not current even as for the filing date. So you know, once the filing dates become current um, for your June two thousand sixteen, I mean, it's not under the EB two. Yeah. You have to downgrade it to EB three and then move forward in that line. Okay. If your employer is cooperative okay. on those lines, previous employer. Please, you know, make Hello? sure also maintain your, you know, um, fallback H one B status. Sure. I, I have another question. So, 
Okay. My priority is actually, uh, you know, May 2011, uh, you know, and I still, it's an easy to, I just missed that date, um, you know, so uh, I still have a time, actually, you know, let's say for next month's bulletin that will be coming on, uh, you know, October mid, right, or October 20th, uh, so should I wait until, uh, Shivan, 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 uh, hello? Yeah, so should I... You, you got interrupted. <laughs> you got interrupted with your question. Yeah. Maybe so someone... My question is, ex- uh, my, my priority date is just missed by a week, right? Uh, so, uh, should I actually wait until the next bulletin comes uh, and be ready with everything? If, let's say, they accept, um, you know, the, the priority date for EB2, should I just file with EB2? And if they don't accept, then I go for downgrading option? Or do you recommend regardless go with the I, I got your question. I think, you know, based on your question, so as you are a week shy, so your question is whether to move forward or just stay put till you have the next bulletin. It's up to you. It's an individual decision. As per the positive note on the visa bulletin, you know, they stated that it's going to be a rapid forward movement. Hopefully, it remains the same. If it remains the same, then, you know, you will see that positive news in the November visa bulletin. So, you know, but again, it's your individual call what you really want to do. But, you know, if you have an option to downgrade, but here it's only a week shy. So, you know, make a call on those lines. So, you know, it's up to you what you want to do. But hopefully it is going to be a, you know, forward moment in the next bulletin. Okay. Yes, hey, this is my my I have time till 31st October no. to file this, right? So if I wait till, let's say, 25th, and no. I come to know that November bulletin is accepting my current date, uh, then I should go and file in uh, November. Yes. And if, uh, you know, somehow they say no, then I can just continue uh, because I will have a week time to actually downgrade and file for EB3. Uh, So that's what I will ask. Yeah, yes, you can do that, but make sure, yeah, yeah, you can do that, but make sure, you know, whichever the law firm and you are doing with, you know, they'll be extremely busy, you know, with all the applications coming and going on and then, you know, make sure they honor that and then you are you know, well prepared for that course of action. So let them know this is what you want. So, you know, ahead of time. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Yes, Bandaru. Uh, yeah. Hello. Go ahead, hello. Bandaru. Yeah. Uh, actually, I don't have the birth certificate. So can I take the affidavit from the attorney or the lawyer? And then uh, is that enough? Uh, for the uh, birth certificate you can submit yeah, you can submit an affidavit but that cannot be from the lawyer you know the b- affidavits in plain lieu of birth certificates can be given from your parents so if your pa- both parents are there i would definitely recommend getting both affidavits from your both parents in if not you know just go ahead and you know get it from your maternal or paternal uncles yes you know but definitely uh, at least a birth certificate is required if that is not there you know affidavits can be done yes okay so affidavit means from the parents means like uh, should we register at the local office or uh, just a uh, simple certificate. No, I mean, it's, it's you know, in India, as per India, how they do it, if your parents are in India, you know, they'll do it on a, um, a, a valued stamp paper. You know, it really doesn't matter how much stamp paper it Correct. is, but, you know, they just have to get the format right, do the things right, and get it notarized, and then, you know, you can submit a copy of it. You really don't need the original at this point, so just submit a copy of it with the 485. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. That that uh, helps. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Hi, my name is Bhattula. Um, on the same note, uh, in regards to the birth certificate, right now my mother is with me here in India. Uh, so, uh, um, if I take that from my mother, I don't have to reach out uh, to India uh, for my other relatives, uh, Right. No, no. If so your mom is here, yeah. Yes. If your mom is here, get it done with her right away, right here. But, you know, make sure that you are getting it notarized. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Hello, Uma here. Yeah, Uma, yeah, um, go ahead. Hello. I think we'll go with Uma because uh, she's yeah. trying to hold on. But next we'll go with you, Vijay. Sure. Hello, Namkar Mandi. Right now we are in EB2. Uh, our, uh, um, my daughter is turning... Uh, 20 years and 
అండ్ మేము డౌన్గ్రేడ్ చేసుకున్న తర్వాత ఇవి త్రీకి ప్రాసెస్ లాంగ్ అయితే మా దా ఏజ్ అవుట్ అయి అవుతుంది సో ఆ ప్రాసెస్ లో ఏజ్ అవుట్ అయినప్పుడు అంటే షీ స్టిల్ వ్యాలిడ్ ఫర్ దిస్ ఫోర్ ఎయిటీ ఫైవ్ తన ట్వంటీ వన్ కంటే ముందే ఫైల్ చేస్తున్నారు కాబట్టి ఎస్ ఇప్పుడు మీరు డౌన్ గ్రేడ్ చేసుకుని ఈబీ త్రీ లో చేస్తే షీ షుడ్ బి ఎలిజిబుల్ ఫర్ హర్ ఓన్ ఇండివిజువల్ ఫోర్ ఎయిటీ ఫైవ్ సో అడ్జస్ట్మెంట్ జనక వాట్ ఇఫ్ వాట్ ఇఫ్ వాట్ ఇఫ్ ద సేమ్ నోట్ సేమ్ క్వశ్చన్ సో ఇఫ్ దే ఆర్ ఇన్ ఎడ్జ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇయర్ ఎడ్జ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఎడ్జ్ ఆఫ్ ద 21 ఇయర్స్ లెట్స్ సే దే మేబీ 20 ఇయర్స్ ఆన్ 6 మంత్స్ నౌ దే స్టార్టెడ్ టు అప్లై ఇట్ స్టేట్ టు ద 10 మంత్స్ టు అప్రూవ్ ద యు నో 485 ఆఫ్టర్ 20 ఇయర్స్ మేబీ షీ షుడ్ హావ్ ఇన్ ఎడ్జ్ ఫర్ ద సేమ్ స్టేటస్ ఆర్ ఇట్ మస్ట్ వీ నీడ్ టు అప్లై ద Yeah, after 21, she cannot stay as a dependent status. She should definitely move on to a different status. But, you know, the pending adjustment of status application gives her the eligibility um, to, uh, you know, gives her or him an eligibility of uh, stay inside the country based on that. And then they can, of course, you know, work and travel in and out of the country. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So adding to that question, so, so she doesn't need anything of a fun status? if she is in the college at 20 or that one 19. yeah that one i would definitely recommend to check with the uh, particular school dso but you know um, pending adjustment of status definitely you know gives them that kind of status inside the country to stay work and travel but you know run with the school dso specifically you know each individual university is different so run with them okay thank yeah. you thank you thank you very much so janeth uh, maybe we can take the next couple of next uh, couple of questions yeah, and i think uh, you know hardly we have 4 minutes so as per yeah, the 30 minute time frame yeah. so we'll wrap it up yeah hari you can go for yeah, yeah. Uh, vijay maybe vijay. vijay this is vijay yeah sure thank you thanks for taking the question so my uh, priority date is currently um, it's october 2017 in eb2 category so do you recommend me downgrading to no no re- repeat that sorry re- repeat that again i'm sorry yeah, about your question repeat that what's the priority october 2017 in ebt oh, no uh, is okay. is question vijay question is uh, janata is a vijay question is currently is a uh, uh, priority date is uh, october 2017 the now the the, the current situation everyone is uh, degrading eb2 eb3 is the right time to do the degrade to eb2 eb3 the his yeah, I mean, question yeah if the dates are moving in the same manner and then you know if there is a rapid forward movement if the eb3 is you know still going ahead and then coming until you know 17 18 or whatsoever i think if you are well prepared right now at least downgrading you know i mean you know um, that would help you to save some time on those lines so you know reach out to your employer and then you know um, have a word with them and then see how it goes okay Uh, we can take a last uh, uh, hi this is ten hi this is tendu uh, i have a couple yeah, of sure. questions i'm planning to downgrade from ab2 to ev3 and file uh, concurrently 140 485 uh, before october 31st what happens if the eb3 dates retrogress and my 140 is still in process or let's say my 140 gets approved in 3 months am i still eligible to get approval for the combo card for ead and ap The as long one. as yeah as long one. as you filed uh, the i140 and 485 concurrently and then your 485 is recepted along with the 765 and 131 yes even the dates retrogress back at least you know based on your i140 because you applied when they are current you should be able to still move forward and have those cards okay so the follow up question on that uh, Uh, if i need to travel to india uh, i still have valid h1 but i don't have valid visa let's say the consulates uh, open in january so uh, i'm if i'm still waiting for my the combo card can i travel to india and get the visa stamping done and come back i don't i, I need to wait i, I don't recommend that 
Yeah, I don't recommend traveling. Once you travel during the pendency of the petition, you know it is considered as abandonment. Once you put up the four eighty five petition, wait here inside the country till your combo card arrives, and then make those kind of decisions to travel out. And also make sure you run it with your individual employers, and then with the attorneys before leaving the country. Make sure you inform them because once you leave, there is no way that you know something miracle can happen. They can save it. Everybody has to. to go with the rules you know comply with the rules so if you have the travel plans let them know so that way they will advise you on those lines once 485 is filed unless and until you have uh, a uh, advance parole and uh, you know advance parole document you can have travel that's what my advice would be yeah thank you so let's thank say you. if it, there is any I, family emergency comes and uh, i'm still waiting for the ap the combo card right So can I put any uh, like covering letter or something for saying that you know because of the family emergency I had to travel? You are taking a chance on that, doing that. Of course, you know you have a family emergency, you have to leave. But you know whether the USCIS accepts it or not, it is up to you. But most likely, as per the rules, they don't. Okay, thanks. I think uh, Venkat, can we go with uh, just a, just a second? I think we'll go with uh, Shiva Mekala. Uh, I think I have a request on that. Shiva, are you still online? Shiva Mekala. Uh, hi. Yeah. Hi. Thank yeah. Go ahead, Shiva, with your questions. Uh, uh, I work with Company A, and I have 140 approved in August 2012. And mm-hmm. in 2017, I changed the company, and they have uh, upgraded to EB2. Mm-hmm. Uh, now my company is ready to file with EB three one forty because it was not cancelled. Is that okay? So your company A, which you left, you know, um, where you have a valid I one forty, they are willing to file for your four eighty five. That's what your question is, right? Yeah, that EB three. Yes. Yeah, yeah. As long as you know, I mean, because you know, EB three dates are two thousand fifteen January. Yes, you are eligible for that. And then, as long as the company is supportive of that, yes, definitely have that opportunity. Make sure you know that you are filing everything properly, and then you know, uh, go ahead and file your four eighty five because they are willing to uh, support you for that. So you'll be filing the four eighty five J and four eighty five complete petition with the USCIS. Hi, uh, this is Wobandar again. I just actually need to do the same uh, thing. You say like uh, <coughs> some pre-defined pre- format of the birth certificate. Do we need to follow any standards for that, or as generic uh, the format is fine? You mean for the affidavit? The parents uh, to affidavit. Yeah, 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 there will be a format. You know, whoever the law firm that is filing for the 485, they'll give. You know, we are giving our clients the 485 for whom we are doing the 485s. We are giving them the samples once they become our clients. So okay. you know, whoever is filing, they should be able to provide you a sample of that. It it needs to be in a format. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here we are stopping conference call. Uh, one to one minute. It means already we exceeded one hour yeah. uh, as scheduled. Yeah, I think uh, Venkat will go with one last question with Vamshi. I don't want to disappoint him. Vamshi, go ahead and wrap okay. it up quickly, please. Yeah, thank you so much. Hi, I, I have uh, I one forty approved with my previous and priority date is twenty. I am working. I can't hear you, Vamshi. Be louder. Be louder. Can't hear you. Okay, sure. I have uh, I one forty approved my. Your, your voice is breaking uh, down. There is no continuation in the voice. Sorry about that. Maybe, maybe Vamshi, maybe better to reach out to the Janata at Janata Law dot com. Adrate Janata Law dot com. Can you so, repeat one more time, Vamshi? Because you know I am not able to hear you. Can you repeat one more time? Yeah, are you able to hear now? Yes. So I have a good lawyer. And the priority date is 2030. A new company. Uh, they have filed my form. Form is also approved. And currently we are preparing I-140 stays with my new employer. So can I request them to apply it in EB3 and uh, uh, proceed with 485 concurrently? Oh, that will be a good news for you if they yes. recruited it for you know the all the requirements underlying requirements are for EB2. 
yes you know as the uh-huh. form is readily available for you original will be there so i140 and 485 can be done concurrently and you can use the premium process for that yes you can use it that's a very good news for you yeah won't she has a good chance to apply oh, no. premium process and get approved that's okay. correct yeah oh sorry i'll still be eligible for premium processing as well Yes, yes, because you are, your current employer will be filing the original labor and this is the, you know, before it expires, they are filing. Yes, they should be able to use the premium process, I-140 and 485 concurrently filing. So, we are ending it on a positive note. Oh, okay. That's, That's good. good. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, positive. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good news, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, okay. Last question is very good, good positive note. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, being with you. Yeah, thank you. It was really helpful. Yeah, you're always welcome. And then any questions, either you can reach out to us, you know, Janeta at JanetaLaw dot com or Legal at JanetaLaw dot com, or you know, you can reach out to your individual attorneys. But make sure you make that kind of informed decision before filing the four eighty five, so that way you you know don't regret it later. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So Janeta, just one. Thanks a lot. Uh, this, uh, this session really helps a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks to NRA Radio. So thanks to Venkat no. and Vilas. So you know for uh, doing Jeneta, such a wonderful to, job. Yeah, Janata, just to uh, stay for two two minutes. Just I want to conclude everything. Just mm-hmm. uh, I have one more question. Last question from the Facebook uh, wall. Anjani Reddy, uh, Sangam Reddy. I mean, so currently. Uh, currently not with old employer, but if I want to downgrade by contacting to old employer if he ready to apply then he downgraded downgraded is denied it means uh, is a uh, downgraded eb3 is uh, denied in case in this case would like to know what happened to my old eb2 i140 it should still remain in place as long as that that downgrade is done properly so they have to you know Uh, technically refile it not amend it so if the downgrading is done properly by the law firm so you should you know there should be no impact on your eb2 if the eb3 gets rejected yeah is a is a good good one so yeah thank you janetha thank you very much uh, being with tell you another video just when we ask you give me we schedule for one hour but you give me a lot of time we know that almost two or three minutes <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah now is when today it means you have the um, valuable time for you for process your applications but you given to your valuable time to telvenar radio and community that is very thankful from telvenar radio and uh, the callers we thankful thankful to you just to generalizing it means uh, everyone know it means we are we are trying to do uh immigration so interviews to get give the more information and uh, uh simplify the us immigration uh, information so that you can understand and uh, you can apply your case and you can talk to your attorney maybe you can reach out to the janetha law firm so get uh, get clear on your situation so that you can take action on this one so uh, we can do continuous the uh, immigration so next few days maybe today maybe we took the a uh, lot of questions still we missed we can take it uh, maybe in coming visa visa uh, the webinars maybe you can reach out to the janetha maybe you can reach out to telvenar radio web page this video will be available in telvenar radio facebook and uh, telvenar radio youtube channel so that you can go any time and uh, see and tell the entire the interview so that you can get the all information what we discussed today if i missed any questions maybe maybe sorry for that one maybe you can you can tune to the telvenar radio in future interviews maybe you can ask the same questions uh, thank you thank you very much janetha um, you you are being supporting to the telugu community or maybe indian community fast couple of years we thankful to you um, in 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 uh, this this is a very fragile situation everyone is a uh, everyone know the information but they don't uh, they don't know how take the uh, steps to the right direction i think yeah, this you're interview welcome, will, yeah, yeah this interview is yeah this interview given the more detail very useful information to them maybe they this will useful for them to go to the right direction uh, yeah, thank you very, very much venkat and 
yeah yeah thank you nra radio and venkat so you know it's a wonderful session at least you know through this if i am able to answer some of those questions and then you know serve the community in that way as we are doing for so many years you know i am happy for that and also you know thanks nra radio for giving me the such a wonderful opportunity and you know spending this valuable time with all of them answering those questions thank you yeah thank you so today uh, we are signing off you know today we are signing off uh, we can do the more immigration interviews next couple of days maybe till october maybe you can you can tune any time maybe you can post your question any time we are ready to help to you we we will try to we will give we will try to give the right direction so thank you thank you very much uh, today uh, thanks for join the call i'm signing off venkat